afternoon. Welcome to everyone here and welcome to our online students as well. My name is Dorothy Carner. I'm the journalism librarian and uh, my colleague Sandy Schaefer. Schaefer. Hi, I'm Sandy Schaefer. Um, I do both government documents and journalism research and I hope you enjoy our presentation today and learn something new about how to determine whether something is going to be fake or real. So what is fake news? We're talking about false or inaccurate information intended to deliberately deceive. David Mickelson of Snopes warned that fictions and fabrications that comprise fake news are but a subset of the larger bad news phenomenon, which also encompasses many forms of shoddy, unresearched, error-filled, and deliberately misleading reporting that do a disservice to everyone. A lot of these viral claims aren't news at all, but fiction, satire, and efforts to fool readers into thinking they're for real. Some of you may have seen some of these um, news headlines. Notice we have fake news from social media. Some of the headlines of engagement from ending the Fed, the Pope Francis shocks the world, endorses Donald Trump headline. Over 960 million people engaged with that. Notice ending the Fed. Ending the Fed is, is a far right-wing site that is really um, determined to end, end the, uh, well, it, it doesn't agree with our Federal Reserve System, as a matter of fact. The political insider is fake. And then the Denver Guardian, there is no such thing. Uh, it, it was simply made up for a little while. So what types of bad news are we talking about? The fake, which is completely fabricated. It has no intersection with real world events. It could be satire or even parody, but some people don't even understand that. They don't get that it's satire or parody and take it for real. Much is simply fabricated to elicit a response. It's clickbait. Partisan political sites that take nuggets of real news and spin them into highly distorted clickbait articles. And then old news repackaged as if it were current content. And then there are those sites that may believe that they're presenting pertinent info but are woefully inadequate, inaccurate in their information gathering and reporting. So this isn't new. Fake news has been around for a long time. You'll notice that the Cincinnati Commercial Tribune and back in 1890 had mentioned fake news as well as the Cleveland Plain Dealer in 1893. And basically it was because of these things that our Missouri School of Journalism was founded in 1908. Um, yellow journalism, fake news, a lot of things. And so um, that prompted uh, Walter Williams to create the journalist creed. And we didn't have quite as much until recently. So why now? Why, do we, why are we interested in this? Well, the election cycle brought it to our attention. Both Pew and RGI recently had surveys that indicated over 62% of the U.S. adults get news on social media. That's, over, that's well over half. 64% say fake news has left Americans confused about basic facts. 65% were confident that they could identify a fake news headline right away, but 40% um, were confident that they had never shared a fake news story less than 50% were able to correctly identify a fake news headline in the survey. Uh, one thing we want to talk about today is the filter bubble. 
we all live in a world where we're used to going to Google or Facebook and finding information about what, we're, what we are interested in. And Google and Facebook know all about you. You know when you shop for a pair of shoes, and the next time you go to a website, there's shoes advertisements. They know what you're looking for, Facebook. They know what your political leanings are. They know where you are. In the state, they know that you're at the university. They can pinpoint that. They know how old you are, what you're interested in, and your leanings towards um, the right or the left and your political leanings are your beliefs on particular things. So they serve up information that confirms what you already believe. That's a confirmation bias. But since we're in this bubble, it's hard to get a wide spectrum of information. If you go into um, just Google and several of your friends all search the same thing, you're going to get different results. So you have to be aware that what you're interested in is usually reflected back on the information that you get on the web. Who can we trust? This was put together by Vanessa Otero, and it shows the different leanings, it's kind of small to read, um, where there's sites that have existing biases, and you can know that. And they won't really help convincing others because um, most of the things that we believe are emotional or something that's already confirming our bias. You can see that the, uh, the Blaze or the Daily Caller tends to be conservative. Of course, they call it utter garbage. Um, you may not agree with what's on this screen or the placement of your favorite website or news organization, but the idea is to give you that there is a continuum. There are search sites that you can usually trust implicitly. There are going to be liberal websites that give their bias and not only in their articles, but the types of articles they produce are going to be ones that are going to confirm your already, the things that you already believe. Social media, as I mentioned before, Facebook knows a lot about you. There's uh, recommendations from your friends on social media, and you tend to more lead these more because they're your friends, they're your colleagues, so they must know what's going on, so you can trust what they show you. There were studies done about how youth are absorbing the news, and you base your belief on social media posts by who posted it, Again, whether it's a friend or a colleague or a new site, and who hosted it? Where did it come from? Are you aware of that site? Can you uh, confirm the news article by going to that website? And the number of likes or reposts. This article has 900,000 reposts. It must be true. So you have to be aware of this on social media. As Dorothy pointed out, that's where a lot of people get their news now. You don't necessarily go to a particular website. So you have to be careful that this is presenting information within your little filter bubble that we talked about. So you're getting information that sort of bounces back the same information and opinions that you already have. And I would say, well, Facebook has attempted to filter out the bad news because they get complaints about this. Why am I seeing this stuff which is obviously not true? Well, as this quote says, the technical solutions are not going to be the final solution because there's um, wiggle room a lot of those places on that continuum I showed you. You can't always say that this particular news site always has fake news. Well, there's a few of those. But even some of the sites that are more on the right or the left, a lot of what they print is really, really good stuff. But you have to realize that they may also produce items that um, may not be as trustworthy. Is this yours anymore? That's yours. That's mine. Okay. Evaluating news and websites, what do you want to look for to validate the information that you find? One thing to do is read the article closely. The headline may be really fantastic and shocking to you. Well, read the article itself. Does it really support that headline or are they just trying to get your attention? You can look at the URL of the website. If it's a .com, you know it's a company. And you think, well, .org, those are um, usually nonprofit agencies, we can trust all those. Not necessarily. Anyone can get a dog or website. So look at the URL and the domain to get an idea of what type of site it is. Dot edus are usually trustworthy because they're education sites. But again, you want to check that university or that college to make sure that they are legitimate. You want to look at who created the information. Who's the author? If it's a really weird article and you're not sure, Google the author. 
see if they're an actual journalist or where they come from, what their background is. Check the date. There have been instances where an article that was published four or five years ago is published today, saying this is the news, this is what happened today, and it's based, or a lot of times it's just plagiarism. They copy an article and present it as news. And again, look at the sources, where it comes from. Look at the sponsors of the website and the types of advertisements you see. That again may give you hints about the site and maybe who sponsors it. What types of advertisements are they showing? Check other sources. You know, even if they say all news reports, you know, all the big news sites are reporting this, check. Check CNN, New York Times, Fox <coughs> News. See what else other people are saying about this. And if you don't see it on some of the bigger websites, it's most likely not true. If you've got data, if it's a really valid website, they're going to show you where they got their information from for their data. Maybe the American Community Society or the uh, Department of Defense, National Criminal, Criminal Justice System. So you want to look at the data and make sure that it makes sense. And if you really want to look into it further, go to that source and see if you can re reproduce the data. And what is the message? A lot of sites are trying to convince you of something or confirm what you already believe. So you want to think, what are they trying to tell us? Are they just trying to present facts? Or is it more of an opinion piece? So you need to look at all these things to make sure that the article that you found is valid and um, can be trusted. We want to look at some of the ads. Is that yours? <laughs> We're still working on who's doing which page and parts of the presentation. So one thing I want to look at is one thing that's often confusing is what advertisements are. They're usually mixed up with the articles themselves, so it can sometimes be difficult to find. Okay, these over here, you look, they're pretty much that. What about these recommended? Does that, who, what does that mean? Recommended by who? By CNN? They tend to be more um, cultural, culturally related. Let's see if we get some more advertisements down here. These are obviously advertisements. Paid partner content. You see that? All these things people pay to put on there. Rolling Stone is not borrowing articles from Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone says, we want you to display these articles. So think about where the information is coming from. So the only hint is this paid partner content. You might just scroll by that and say, oh, this is really good stuff. But again, you have to go back to the original website and see what's there. Let me try one more. Let's look at Yahoo. Now, nobody goes to Yahoo anymore, right? That was one of the old ones. AT&T. So we can see that one's sponsored by AT&T. But if you look at the list of articles, does any of them um, show up that you look and go, oh, wow, that's an advertisement. You've got a little teeny tiny gray thing that says sponsored. But it's mixed up with the other articles, so you have to pay attention to what you're reading and if someone is paying for this information to be shown. Um, there are some others, and I like Dr. Oz. Let's go there real quick. <laughs> Little teeny tiny light gray. This is an advertisement. But you can't always tell a close look. We recommend, again, sponsored links. That usually mean it's paid by someone to show up there. It just doesn't necessarily mean they're a partner. And some university says, oh, we'll sponsor this site. It's money is what they're getting. I'll give you a few examples to look at of comparison of articles. So sometimes in your feed, your social media feed, you'll get these claims. Drinking tequila can help you lose weight. Well, think about that for a minute. Is it preposterous or might it be true? Well, let's look at that article for just a second. All right. So it's from, in this case, from lifestyle from Spoon University lifestyle um, so we 
we look at, they're talking about the American Chemical Society, the effects of tequila on blood glu glucose levels, etc. So let me go back here just a second. Which one, Sandy? Okay. Well, let's let's really look here. This is one that says tequila plant is possible sweetener for diabetics to help reduce blood sugar. But if you move down through here, it's the agave that actually helps reduce blood sugar. And once tequila, once the agave has actually been um, fermented, there is no benefit for sugar reduction. So you have to, it was preposterous. I didn't believe it. So that's one of the reasons to check into it. Uh oh, here we go. Okay. All right, we have, have technical difficulties. Just a second here. Okay, thanks. All right, another thing that happened, and you can check on this, and I won't leave the site right now, but Ford shifts truck produ production from Mexico to Ohio. Um, this was, I will go there, actually. You'll notice that this was from CNN Money, and it was from August 17th, 2015. Now, in 2016, the same article was plagiarized on a different site, which is actually sometimes called uh, a reasonable financial site, but the top has been cut off here. Oh, here it is, ETF News. It's exactly the same article, and it says it's been prefaced with, since Donald Trump won the presidency, Ford shifts truck production from Mexico to Ohio. There is no byline, and the date is one year later. So another article comparison, eight reasons you should never order salmon. Right. This is from a, a man named David Zinsenko, who, who writes books about reducing belly fat. So he is telling you that it, you should never eat farmed salmon. However, I don't really believe those kinds of things, and so I like to go to evidence-based research. And so from environmental research, just recently, May 2017, actually, it's, it's just right now, uh, we have something that contradicts that, that idea that uh, farmed salmon is worse for you than, than um, other salmon. Mm -hmm. Fact-checking sites. So if you really want to find out if something is true or if it, if it is blatantly false, try PolitiFact. We also suggest factcheck.org. Snopes. Snopes has been around for a very long time and pundit fact. So these are all places that you can go. As a matter of fact, Journalism School has been working with PolitiFact in some of our classes.
And then there are these sites that are actually satire or parody. The Onion, a lot of people are familiar with The Onion. Then there's the World News Daily Report. Some of them are to the left, some of them are to the right, and some people don't really get the subtlety of the parody. But each one of these sites, if you read something from them, you need to take what they're saying with a grain of salt because for the most part, they're, they're acting as satire or parody. And then there are these other examples of misleading red websites. The MartinLutherKing.org site, that's notorious, everybody seems to be aware of that, is actually a white pride site if you look at who set it up. And then there's the abcnews.com.co site that, uh, ha that showed up a lot during the um, election cycle. It was also a parody site. Notice it looks so much like abcnews.com but it has an additional extension, .co. You can't find it now except if you go to the Internet Archive. But really crazy, wild and crazy articles that looked like they were actually coming from abcnews.com. And BuzzFeed USA is not BuzzFeed. It's, it is another site that's supposed to look like BuzzFeed. If you look at it, you'll see that the, the site doesn't look like BuzzFeed, so it is, once again, one of those sites that you want to steer clear of. And then WhiteHouse.org is definitely not go taking you to the White House. You notice on some of those, like I mentioned earlier, is look at the URL and the domain. The one, MartinLutherKing.org, remember, oh, those are generally non-for-profit websites. So you think, oh, this must be real, but look at the site itself, evaluate it. You can also look at um, if it's even recent. If it's got like all those flashing HTML and it's all purple and green and stuff, it's usually not made by someone who's credible. Someone may just put it as a hobby or, again, intended to deceive. Let's look at some data. This was an article that talked about the Stand Your Ground Law in Florida and how the murders went down, murders by gun. That's what they had to say. What's wrong with this graph? Well, one thing, the main thing is the zero is at the top. So the graph has been is upside down. So if you look at 2005, the murders actually went up from about 580 to 840 or something. But most people look at this and go, wow, the murders went down. But you have to look at the data. Let's go look at the data itself and see what that has to say. Violent crime for Florida. And you can see here, another thing I was thinking of, it shows murder, but it doesn't show murder by guns on this site. There's no way to pull out that data that they supposedly got from this site. And you can see that after 2005, we just look at murder, that it went up quite a bit. So you can always go back, as I mentioned earlier, look at the data go to the website and confirm that you're getting the same information that they are showing you. Misleading graphs. This is a diminishing financial return of higher education. If you look at this, look how much college education is going up. How much the cost is. Are we really getting our money's worth? And it shows it in terms of annual um, earnings for college educated. Look at that. It's really not going up much at all. So why should we pay for this college education? One thing it doesn't show is what happens if you don't have a college education. It's much below the line that shows the college education earnings. If you add up the average earnings it would make over a lifetime, there's a huge difference between college educated and non-college education. So it isn't just the data that's shown, but the data that may be missing. Evaluated images, it's so easy to manipulate a photo or a video online anymore. 
and we know that we can't trust everything we see. You can look for hints. There's several sites. Photoshop Disasters that shows you most of the uh, really obvious ones. A lot of advertisements in that where a woman is missing a leg because she's sitting, you know, it goes down the table and doesn't show her leg in the back. So those are some really crazy ones. But you also want to look at the image itself and see if there's something there which may hint that there's a problem. You can convert, uh, perform a Google reverse image search, and that will bring you up all the different sites that also have that image available. And you can compare, because it will show you images that look like the one that you put in there. And you can see if there's another picture or photo that makes a lot more sense. There's Tiny Eye, which will let you get metadata, at least get you um, information about when it was created, and that could help you know, understand when um, <laughs> more information about an image. Let's look at this one. Leaked picture of Oma dragged before a judge in handcuffs. Do we notice anything odd about this picture? For one thing, he looks a little bit larger than the men behind him. And the coloring of the suits made it thin, but it looks actually pretty authentic. Let's see the regular site. It's fake. It was another person that had gone before the judge they just swapped out the picture of the photo, photo of Obama. So even though it may look true, and this was from PolitiFactor, one of the ones that found this website and these images and showed you the old one and the original. Here's another one. Here's an article about it. Tens of thousands of votes of Clinton Warehouse. This um, image looks real. Look at all those ballot boxes in some warehouse somewhere. We have no idea where this picture came from. Someone could have photoshopped the ballot box. It may just somebody, some banker's file somewhere. It's maybe a Creative Commons photo. You don't know where this came from. And the New York Times did a good article about this showing the progression of um, this photo and where it came from and how they found out that it was not true at all. Malaysia Airlines. I looked at this photo, it's by Virec, and I trucked into them too. Um, it's an independent person, um, a sole person that was doing it. But if you look at this picture, you think, well, who's the guy in the suit? And there's a couple people behind him, look like they're just coming off the plane. And I thought everyone was dead. Who's taking the picture? You know, you, if there's someone from rescue or emergency, they should be there, they should be in the photo instead of just some random person that happened to lay on their plane right next to the Malaysian Airlines and say, oh, I'm going to take a picture. Well, if we look at it, it's actually from the show Lost. <laughs> All they did was change the logo on the airplane. If the people were passing it all around social media, they put it on Facebook, pray for these people from this airline. And you think, well, what difference does it make? It's just a picture of a crash airplane, is it really true or not? It's sort of getting out the emotion and the that you're going to feel about this. But it's fake. You don't want to base your information on stuff that is not true. So you have to check. This is one of my favorite ones. So both images and videos and photos, look at where they came from and um, who created these images. I bet a lot of you read this article or saw it being shared on social media about Adam Sala, who said he was removed from the plane for speaking Arabic to his mother on the phone. Well, Mr. Sala, this was actually reported in Al Jazeera. And Mr. Sala has, has done a lot of things, and he has raised the bar for showing people about how other people treat Muslims. But he also is a prankster, and in this case he was a prankster. He and his friend were actually ex exchanging loud barbs and other things on the flight to elicit some kind of response from Delta, and Delta did actually remove them from the plane. But the story is that, and Alicia Shepard, a former NPR ombudsman, 
reports that she goes through the entire process like a normal journalist might do. Did it really happen? We had a, a video shot. What did Delta say? What, how did this, how did this um, process continue? We have a, a disclaimer by, by Snopes and then we have, uh, it, it was picked up by CNN as real news. It was retweeted around social media, but hardly anybody really looked at what was happening. And I doubt if most of us even are aware that it was recounted and that Delta really did just just kick off people for being uh, disruptive on the plane. It had nothing to do with the speaking Arabic. But he certainly got a lot of likes. Another erroneous um, headline that was passed around social media was that Obama uses his own money to open Muslim museum amid government shutdown. Well, this was back in 2013. Uh, there is a Muslim museum in Mississippi, and there was a government shutdown, but the but it was a national report parody, and uh, it was picked up by Fox News. It was picked up also by the Trump um, folks, and it was actually passed around as truth. I'm going to go over a few more sites because we have you some betcha. time. You betcha. Okay. We talk faster than we thought we would. <laughs> so I'm going to go back here. No thanks. We don't need a librarian at the moment. So we keep talking about Snopes. How many of you heard of Snopes? No, people online can't raise their hand. It's great, especially for urban legends. Oh, I found a snake in my toilet and now I'm unable to have children. I thought this one, arrested for training squirrels to attack her ex-boyfriend. So especially a weird, odd news that you see on Facebook, you can go here to double check. Double Donald Trump considering resignation. Google, this is something I just read a minute ago. They're starting out a new feature which adds fact check information to your results. So they will use... Um, <laughs> other fact-checking sites to look at the articles and then give you an idea of how true it may be. And they're going to give more, uh, higher results to those that have been fact-checked. Now, as I mentioned earlier, technology is not always the situation, the best answer to that. So there's going to be limited in what they can do. But at least you can, you're going to have a better idea of what they think, fact-check tech. So they don't know that has come out yet. Oh, here we go. Man find dead in the belly of the python. Has anybody, anybody see that picture? It was pretty gross, actually. Um, was that true or not? Let's find out. They're probably going to have the picture. Well, we'll skip the picture. Or find video. There's been accounts of now and then, but they don't really think that this is going to be powerful enough to eat an entire human being. But your first thought, oh my god, snakes, they're going to eat me next time I go in the jungle. Think about what the information, if it's meant to shock or um, give you some emotional response. If it's unbelievable, it probably is. And Snopes will help you figure that out. We were talking about Pope's um, how Trump endorsed the Pope. <laughs> well, where would you go to actually find out whether that's true or not? How about if we check the Vatican? They put out news information about what the Pope is doing and what he has to say. So if we look on there, I'm just going to search for Trump. Because if he did endorse him, you think that would be pretty obvious on their site. There's some news about Trump, but nothing about his endorsement. It's not something he's did, done before. He doesn't really try to get into p politics. So you want to think about where could I go to check this out? Google is always the first place to start. See if there's other 
or news organizations that are showing you the same story. Correlations. I love this site. We were talking about data. And sometimes people confuse correlation with causation. Correlation are two items that look like they may be related to each other. Causation makes a connection. A causes B. So we've got some graphs here that look like, wow, they're on the same level, so they must cause one or the other. Spending on science versus suicides. Remember people who drowned by falling into a pool with films Nicolas Cage appeared in? Do you think there's a causation between those two events? Probably not. Another hint is that there are two Y axes that don't really have anything to do with each other. So the curve from one and the other may be similar, but they're not necessarily causation. I like this one. Divorce rate per capita consumption of margarine. So this is a good size. Spurious correlations. Let's look at some of the <coughs> Um, especially with election systems, we um, have a lot of local politicians, even in Missouri, the races that we had, and you see something in the newspaper, so-and-so said this, I believe that education is important and we need to give this much money to the Department of Education. What they say is not always true. They're not trying to lie to you, but maybe they saw some odd data. Maybe they saw a graph that wasn't really showing you the right information from the right source. PolitiFact is a good place to check for that. Let's just look for our new governor. All right, right in this, let me spell it. Job growth. And this is the one that has the half true, mostly false, half true, and liar, liar, pants on fire. So it gives you an analysis of what they say. Here's one I mentioned on K through 12. It, it has an exact quote of what they've done, and then it shows you what they're getting from the education department and how those numbers may differ. differ. So especially, I mean, it's PolitiFact as far as pro political people and uh, legislatures. You know, right off the bat, they're correct in saying this, but there are other information that is not matching up. This is slow going backwards. Most of those are half true, great. So there's a false. Ten tax brackets, and if you're making nine thousand, you're already at the top tax bracket. What do they mean, top tax bracket? Does that mean you're paying the most taxes, or you're paying the least amount? What way are they talking about the top? And you can see here it shows a tax chart, and if you're under nine thousand dollars. This is what you're going to be paying. Five and a half percent over eight thousand. So under eight thousand, you pay even less. And as it goes up, you pay more and more percentage. So that statement just wasn't very clear about what they were trying to accomplish. Jordan Snopes. Is this is a dot org? Does that mean that you can trust it? necessarily. So even for with fact checking sites, you want to check to see is this done by a newspaper, a nonprofit organization, go to the organization site. How are they biased? Do they have some things that they're trying to accomplish with their news? And here, sessions dubious drug claims. This gives articles on what's currently in the news. They don't have the uh, pants on fire. But they give a little more detail. So if you're looking for information on your local politician and you're not sure what to believe, you can check these sites and they're going to help. Here's another org, whitehouse.org. That has to be something that has to do with things. Fabulous instant Syria war. How does that make you feel? 
fabulous war. They want you to feel a certain way and then believe what they're saying. Specification schedule. Trump models pre-owned clearance specials. What is that? It's a huge deal. It doesn't say it's sponsored. It doesn't say it's an advertisement, but it is. So whitehouse.org is not the place to go to. Years ago, you used to go to whitehouse.com, and it was a porn site, which has since been taken down. Where would you go? Whitehouse.gov. There's an advanced Google technique, which I'm going to show you, that talks about, you think about domains and what you can trust. Uh, let's see. Site. What that site shows you is that you're only going to look at sites that have that .edu domain. So we're at Brookings Institute, um, Yale Education, or Yale.edu. So you're going to get sites that you can probably a little more trustworthy. Again, you have to look at the college or university. There was Spoon University. I don't think that's something that's very um, trustworthy. So that site thing will res restrict your information to a particular domain. Okay, you want to finish up here? Finish. So, in summary, don't believe everything you read or you hear or you see. Things can be modified. They can come from spurious sources. And think critically. Always check. Remember to think about evidence-based ideas. So if something is, tells you that it's going to be able to cut fat, then are you sure? What do, what's the scientific evidence to tell you that? Be aware of confirmation bias. It was so easy for us to think that Adam Silla was kicked off of the uh, Delta flight for speaking Arabic because we, most of us believe that, that probably would happen. But it didn't. It, he was a prankster. It didn't actually happen. But Delta's brand took a hit over that. So always make sure that you know what is, what is actually true. Evaluate websites and articles. Um, always check, as Sandy said, the domain. You can see who registered the site. Follow the registration. Who is the author? Follow them. Find out, just Google them and find out what their, their mission or their ideas are, or, or do they belong to other organizations. Um, the abc.com.co site, a parody site, was uh, a person named Paul Horner who had multiple sites in foxnews.com.co, abcnews.com.co, cbsnews.com.co, and he actually thinks that because he was he did such great work on Facebook that his clickbait may have helped Donald Trump become elected because he really made a lot of money from people clicking on these erroneous sites and just getting wild and crazy information. Be careful what you share. So if you're on Facebook, or if, uh, if you're on you know, any other kind of social media, Twitter, and something is shared by your tribe, people that you believe, believe what you believe, then you're more likely to share that information. But as Sandy mentioned earlier, you're getting the information that these Algorithms are thinking that you want to hear and what you want to see. And so if it sounds ridiculous and preposterous, don't share it. Look it up. Fact check it. And then understand what is being reported and why. What is the ulterior motive? You know, journalists don't have um, 
a professional license. So anybody can claim to be a journalist, but we all know better. So here at the Missouri School of Journalism, we do fact check and we do look for things that are are correct before we report them because it could ruin a person's journalism career. And we look at those sites that we think are, that have credibility, that do actual fact checking and do actual journalism. So the stuff sometimes that you see on social media may not at all be journalism. It's um, content marketing maybe. Sometimes it's just clickbait because people have learned how to how to work the system to to become wealthy. So it's totally up to you. You have to decide what is is logical, think critically, and figure out what is fake and not fake. Because it's all being thrown out there at you right now and it's pretty hard to figure out unless you do a little bit of your own homework. We appreciate your attention today and I suppose if any of you have any questions we're certainly open for that. Yes? Are there any search engines that are less likely to have filtered results? Yeah. The question was um, for you is online is if there are any search engines that tend to be um, Less likely. less likely to have clickbait or reflect what you're already saying. There are more and more. The one that I can think of right now is DuckDuckGo. It, it doesn't filter you and it doesn't collect any information. And so you could search on something. It doesn't know where you're searching from, doesn't collect that information. Uh, it looks like your results are from Google, but your results would be different. It doesn't have the algorithms. Um, I know that there must be others, but that's the one I can think of. Any other questions? Yes? Uh, the question was whether we think CNN is a little more reliable than other sources. I would say it depends on what the other sources are. <laughs> I mean, I go to CNN, Washington Post, New York Times, but I also go to Fox News. I want a balanced view. What are other people reporting? I like CNN because it lists sort of what's happening right now. There's a disaster somewhere. Or there's a vote in Congress. But again, you still have to evaluate what they have to say. Look at the article and see what they're trying to, um, to report to you. So I would say CNN, I'd go there just for general news. What's going on? But when it's analysis or opinion of a particular issue, I try and go to other places too and get a broader view of what's going on. My opinion of CNN is that a lot of broadcast news organizations are in partially the entertainment business. And CNN has many times jumped the gun rehashing re something that has been tweeted before they've actually checked. So all I can say is, uh, before you really believe anything, recheck it because if if something has been reported on CNN, go over to the New York Times, go over to the Washington Post and some other places and see if it's also been reported there. I just I just think it's up to us because anything on broadcast news is it's just not always the best journalism. Especially with the yeah, broadcast news and the cable news. Because it is entertainment. They want to get your attention. They don't have time for in-depth analysis. It's one minute for this and 30 seconds for that. So you're not getting the full information if you watch TV news. Even some of the more uh, reputable sites. They're only giving you a snippet of the story. So that's when you need to go to actual news sites, not Facebook, and see in-depth what they're trying to um, come across and what they're trying to convey to you. Any other questions? All right, we thank you for coming today, including the online folks. Uh, I believe this will be recorded. I know, Laura, you had some students that were supposed to, uh, that were encouraged to come today, and it will be recorded in, or has been recorded, and will be available in a week or so. Uh, today. Today, okay. So <laughs> go back to the library website, and you can see a recording of that.